The uh, topic of my talk today is uh, uh, fine needle bi uh, biopsy and core needle procedures. So I will pretty much elaborate on what Peter said uh, in his first lecture. Uh, I was asked to divide the lecture into four um, equally uh, long parts. I'll, I'll try to do that and, and uh, may not be perfect in the first part. Just give you some background about USFNA. In the second part, we'll talk about factors that influence our yield. And in the two last parts, we'll talk about FNA needles and FNB needles and procedures. So we already know that EUS is a powerful uh, diagnostic tool and with uh, the uh, uh, development of an EUS FNA needle and, and, and it, with its first use actually by Peter, which is something he did not mention, the uh, diagnostic abilities it, it dramatically increased and also there was a potential uh, for therapeutic indications. And, and, and this was 26 years ago and over that time we have been able to achieve diagnostic accuracy of EUS FNA in most studies nowadays in between 80 and 90 percent. Uh, uh, there is a lot of uh, data and a lot of literature on EUS FNA. A nice summary you can find in the um, pretty recent technical guidelines uh, produced by the ESGE and it's not only a summary of the evidence but it's also a recommendation what you should do in, 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 in different parts of the uh, FNA procedure and I will present to you some of the recommendations in my talk. So uh, there is a lot of literature and evidence and when you read the papers you should be aware of some limitations of the, of the, of the evidence. Uh, many papers use uh, different outcomes and these outcomes are differently defined in them. Many of the studies are retrospective. Many of them have inadequate power, especially those that show no difference between two different, uh, let's say, techniques or needles or modalities or investigated things. Or even when you look at the power analysis that these people do, they actually estimate that the difference will be very big, it, it, which, which allows them to, to have fewer patients, but the, the difference that they predict is, is just way too, too large. There is definitely a bias that you cannot get rid of and that's the endosonographer who always knows what he's doing. There's a bias that most of these studies are generated in high volume centers. Final diagnosis is rarely, only rarely confirmed by surgery so we are not, we, we cannot be perfectly sure that, that, that what we have in, in our, in our um, report, pathology report is what, what really there is in the patient a, a, a very common thing, in my opinion, is that, the, that many studies show a very bad result in the control group. So the investigated procedure or a device has a very good result or, or significantly better result, also due to the fact that the result in the control group is bad. And there are very many factors, as we will see later on during the talk, that influence the or the uh, sensitivity of, of the procedure and, and studies usually do not control for all of them. So this is one example, a recent example, a, a well-published paper that uh, investigated uh, one of the new needles that we will discuss later. And as you can see here on this thing, they, they, they looked at how many, what, what the percentage of samples that generated a tissue material that could be evaluated by histology and this is the new needle that they investigate which is a core needle which was pretty good but look they, if you look at the standard needle this was a retrospective comparison only in, they were able to have a sample that could be histologically evaluated only 4% of the cases which is not what we normally see with FNA needles they are much better than that. So EOS FNA is a safe procedure. This is a, a study that, uh, a meta-analysis of many studies, they actually looked at pa patients who had an FNA of pancreatic cystic lesion and you see that the complications really do not exceed 2.5 or 3 percent. The most common complication being ac acute pancreatitis, infection about 0 0.5 percent. Uh, infection is a topic not really in uh, 
FNA of solid lesions, but uh, in pancreatic cystic lesions. And uh, in this study, it was a retrospective study. They looked at procedures that they did with antibiotics. Again, these are, these are cystic lesions. And they looked at procedures that FNAs of cystic lesions that, that were done without antibiotics. And actually, they had, they, there was no difference in any complication, but also there was no difference in infection. And the only infection that they had was in the antibiotic group. So you will see sometimes at the, at the bottom of the slide the, the, the current recommendation of the ESGE. So uh, for solid lesions, we do not use antibiotics. And even though we have this retrospective data and not much more data, antibiotics actually are recommended for patients who do get an FNA for a pancreatic cystic lesion. Um, there is a guideline on how to handle anticoagulants and antiplatelets in patients undergoing various procedures. FNA is a procedure that's considered high risk, so you can keep aspirin. If you have a vitamin K antagonist, you have to stop. If you have some of the um, direct oral anticoagulants, you should uh, stop them too. And uh, it's a little complicated with some of the new antiplatelet agents. And uh, there it depends on the, on the cardiology risk, so how, what, what, the, what the disease of the patient is, what the risk of thrombosis is. So if the risk is low, you can stop them. If the risk is high, like for example, in those drug eluted stents, uh, coronary stents, you, it's better to consult your cardiologist before stopping them and you can continue aspirin because often they use both of them. So how can we uh, process our specimen that we get out of our FNA needle? Uh, you can do a cytology smear. I guess there are various ways how to prepare. You can either air dry it or, or, or do some fixation. Then you can have a liquid sample. So, so um, you take the content of the needle and put it in some liquid solution. And from that, you can have, again, cytology, so liquid-based cytology that your pathologist in the lab will, will make. Or you can make something that is very important. It's a cell block. So you'll spin down the content of the vial. And uh, then this can then, it'll be fixed in paraffin and, uh, uh, or placed in paraffin and can be evaluated for histology. Or you can generate a core, a large core, that goes directly to uh, formalin, for example. We'll talk about that later when we come to FNB needles. So in this first study that I'm showing here, they, they actually did uh, 72 patients, pancreatic solid lesions, and they produced all three types of, uh, of, uh, of uh, preparations, smear, liquid biopsy, and cell block. And you see that the cell block uh, sensitivity was, was greater than smear alone. In this particular study, when they did a combination of cell block and, and smear, it didn't get any better. But in another study that you see here, you have cytology sensitivity here, histology sensitivity here of a cell block. And if you combine them together, you get a better result. So it, it makes sense to aim to get both cytology and histology out of a cell block when you do a fine needle aspiration. And that's also what the recommendation is. So we'll move to the second part of the lecture now, and that will be the, what, what we can do to influence the yield of our FNA. Well, it's already very high. So in most meta-analyses now, it's in between 80 and 90 percent. So can we really get, how do we get there first? Because you need to get there, and can we do something to improve it? So there are various factors that influence the yield. We'll cover them now individually. So ex your experience is very important. There is a certain learning curve for US FNA, uh, for US in first and US FNA. Uh, in the first study shown here, this person did uh, FNA in 57 patients, and you can see what the sensitivity for malignancy was in the in this different quintiles. So it, it's, he started with 30, went to 40, 70, 90, was saturated. So it just remained here after the 57 cases. So, so you will get better in terms of sensitivity when you do more procedures. This is another example where they did 300 procedures and they, the, the accuracy was pretty much the same, but the, the, the people, the, the person needed fewer number of passes to get the same result. 
I think someone already mentioned sedation. Peter, probably, uh, sedation is important. It's more important when you, when you are a beginner. If you, there is a study that shows that if you have general anesthesia for your patient, then you will have a better yield. So it's important to have your, it's a, lot, it's a procedure that takes some time. And if your patient is well sedated, you're likely to have a better result. So different lesions will, be dif will have different difficulty. Uh, there's factors like prevalence of malignancy, of course, that will also influence your result. But your size of the lesion, this was, I don't know if you can appreciate this, it's a smaller, you know, probably less than one centimeter lesion, will be more difficult to target, definitely, as opposed to a four or five centimeter lesion. Uh, its location uh, mm, is also important, so some of the biopsies are when the scope especially is angulated more difficult, especially than with some thicker needles. Fanning was already mentioned. There is a, it is, we know that especially in pancreatic cancer, uh, the cancer is not all over the place. It's probably only at certain areas. And in certain areas, you will have necrosis, and in southern, in, and it's a, also a very it's cancer that not known for its high fibrosis rate. So, in this one randomized controlled study from Orlando, they did they looked at 54 patients, and they did either standard just uh, one, uh, you know, one targeted site biopsy, and they did 16 back and forth movements. And in the other group, they did this fanning, so that you enter the lesion and you try to cover it from one side to the other. So they did four, four different parts, and in, in all of them, four different passes. And you see, I mean, the final result was the same. Uh, however, when you look at the first pass diagnosis, it was much greater if you did fanning, fanning technique. It's not always possible. In some hard lesions, it's difficult when you enter the lesion from one side, uh, from, at one side here, to move the needle. So sometimes you may need to actually withdraw the, the needle up to the uh, uh, edge of the lesion, try to move it with your elevator or big wheel, and then enter again so that you can enter another part of the, um, of the tumor. Stylet, there are, um, stylet is the little catheter that's inside of the, of the needle. Uh, there is an I thought that the, the, it can prevent uh, the needle from getting contaminated by other tissue. There is one, uh, uh, there are, um, there's one randomized study by Dr. Sahai, uh, uh, who will be a guest of this workshop too, where they actually did a, comparison between patients having stylet and without stylet, and they showed that those without stylet actually did better and had more adequate samples. Uh, there were many more uh, randomized st uh, studies, and there is one meta-analysis that I'm showing you here covering a lot of samples, and you see that there is actually no difference in adequacy of the samples and also in contamination. Dr. Sahai actually showed more contamination in those who did not have stylet, but there was no reproduced. So it pretty much doesn't matter, and then you can, there's no recommendation. You can use either, uh, you, 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 can, you can or cannot, do not have to use a stylet. The recommendation for FNB needle comes from the fact that most FNB needles actually are um, used with, uh, with a stylet. Most of the literature that is there published will have a stylet. There are some, Fancy techniques like the slow pull, when you slowly pull while moving in, in within the tissue, there was an, a, a thought that this could this generate some negative pressure, which, which would facilitate tissue acquisition. There were some bench studies that showed that this is not really much pressure that you will generate there. And there is one randomized study from Hopkins by Dr. Saxena that showed no difference. This study was not fully published yet. There's another thing called wet suction. That means you'll fill in the, the, your, your needle with, a, with a saline and that this could better transmit the negative pressure that you produce with the needle at the, uh, with a syringe at the end. There is one randomized study that showed that they, they, they had better sample adequacy, but accuracy was actually not evaluated. So there's not really much data.
suction was also mentioned, I think, by Peter. I'm showing his study here from his department where they randomized patients to 10 milliliter suction or no suction. You see that they were able to obtain more samples, more slides with suction. They had better sensitivity and better negative predictive value. Uh, most other RCTs uh, showed the same. Only one was actually negative for lymph nodes. This was, I think, pancreatic cancer. There is a, um, it probably may increase bloodiness. If you do it yourself, you'll often see more blood. Peter actually, or his group, they did not see. They did not have a difference there. But uh, it is, the, when you look at the data all, overall, the ESG uh, recommends that you use a 10 milliliter suction for pancreatic cancer, for pancreatic lesions and lymph nodes. It's a little thing that you can also do. I, I don't know if you can appreciate this. You know that if you use a syringe, you, we, what we normally do, we uh, turn the, the, the knob uh, at the end of the syringe before we take the needle out. And this may not be enough, what they showed here in a, in a bench test. So if you just take it out, if you just turn the knob off, then the negative pressure that is there normally will still stay there. But you have to disconnect the needle. I, I think that you can already appreciate the picture. So only disconnecting the needle from this, the syringe, sorry, from the needle will actually result in, in, in a, a release of the pressure. And in this randomized study, they had this syringe off and syringe on and the syringe off actually resulted with much greater diagnostic yield of malignancies compared to this. So uh, based on this data, which is limited, and also contamination, you can see the contamination with the syringe off was much lower. So, so the, the idea is that on the way back, you will not contaminate uh, the, 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 the content of the needle. So it is recommended nowadays that you, you, you can neutralize it by, by disconnecting totally the needle. Uh, how many passes do we need to make? We used to think, it was in the previous guideline, that you need to make five to seven passes for pancreatic lesions. There is a nice study here that looked at the sensitivity after each pass, and you can see here that after pass number four, you are getting to a very high sensitivity, and if you keep doing more passes, it doesn't really get any better. Uh, there, uh, there was another finding of this study, and, they, and when they looked at tumors greater than two centimeters and smaller, there was a difference. So these tumors smaller, and we already spoke about size being a, 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 an issue uh, um, influencing the yield. So your yield is likely to be smaller and, 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 and that doesn't also get better with more passes. Uh, you can, of course, use some gross visual assessment, and there are some studies that show that this may be quite efficient. So looking at the sample, deciding when to stop. So it's now recommended that you do three to four passes for a pancreatic lesion and, uh, or lymph node. And if you have a core needle, we'll talk about that later, it's likely that you may need uh, one or two fewer passes. On-site evaluation, I don't know how it is in Denmark. There was a survey done recently. Availability is, is, is about 48 percent in Europe, but very high in the United States. There's a lot of data. Some of the initial studies show that you can get better results if you have, have on-site uh, evaluation. In this randomized study that I'm showing to you, they actually randomized pe uh, your patients to on-site evaluation or seven passes. And so the seven passes group, of course, had seven passes. The on-site evaluation had only four. So you can, by having on-site evaluation, you can logically decrease the amount of passes that you will do. That there will be the overall time difference will not be there. Uh, because You are quicker, you have fewer passes, but you are spending some time with your pathologist. And... Uh, there was no difference in, in sensitivity and specificity between the two groups. So, and now in the last part of the talk, we'll talk about needles. Uh, there are various needles. Peter gave you a nice overview. I, the first row actually are F and A needles, and these are F and B needles. So, 
The FNA and FNB procedures, they actually differ mainly by the needle that you do. The procedure itself is the same. Maybe with an FNB procedure, you may need only a fewer number of passes, but the main difference comes from the needle. So uh, we'll not go into, there are so many you know, different needles. And as Peter said, I think it's not really that important. We'll see some data later what needle you use. It's important that you are familiar with your needle uh, and uh, you uh, develop your own technique and then you stick to it. And I think that's a, that's a way to go and to get a good result. Uh, uh, these are F and B needles. Uh, and uh, this is a, a, a Cook Pro Core needle with this reverse bevel side hole. This is Olympus was already mentioned with the Mangini tip. This one is with a side hole. They come also without a side hole. We will not show you any, I'll not show you any data on this one. This is a recently developed. This is a choir Boston needle that has these three tips here and very sharp edges. This is the shark uh, fork tip needle. And uh, this is a new cook uh, device, 20 gauge. Uh, um, uh, it's also a Procore needle, but it's not a reverse bevel. The bevel is the other way around. We'll show you some studies on this. So we go now to FNA. We start with FNA. So 22 versus 25. Does that make any difference? Uh, we, we used to think in the beginning that there was less trauma, less bleeding, more flexibility, easier to work with. In this multicenter study that Peter did some time ago already, they compare these two needles and you see that actually the, there was no difference in sensitivity and specificity, but there was some difference in, 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 in favor of the 22 needle in terms of visualization and the performance quality and number of slides. There are multiple, there were many randomized control trial. Seven of them were negative, only one was positive for the 25 a gauge needle and there are four meta-analyses with little conflicting results. I'm showing the latest one that actually included only randomized controlled trials. Some of the other meta-analyses meta were uh, it would, would involve also retrospective studies and you see here that we, this is uh, 22 and 22 for uh, sensitivity and uh, this is for specificity, and there actually is not a great difference. There is, uh, mm, th 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 this is sensitivity, so there is a slight difference, better sensitivity here, close to 0 0.95 with the 25 gauge, but this difference was not statistically significant, and for specificity there was no difference also. So uh, the recommendation is that you can equally use both of them. 19 gauge needle is an idea that if you have a large needle, you can either, uh, you know, uh, you have a large channel, so you can aspirate some, sometimes, you know, viscous material or obtain a large sample. There are multiple 19 gauge needles. The Procore 19 gauge needle was evaluated in this study. They had issues here uh, entering the, in, the, in the duodenum, but the performance was very good. There's a newer one from Boston that I think was mentioned too that has this nitinol, you know, it's very flexible to, to make it easier to access t lesions from the duodenum where, where, when the scope is angulated. And uh, the, the, this uh, study showed that the, the, the yield was very good and uh, they were able to get this yield with uh, having 89% of the biopsies done transduodenal. One sentence about pancreatic cystic lesions. Uh, this is one indication for a large caliber needle if you have a viscous material that you need to aspirate. We always try to empty the whole lesion to prevent the risk of infection. We already spoke about antibiotics and you can use, depending on what you think will be uh, the, 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 the fluid 19 gauge or 22 gauge needle. So, and now we go, we move to the last part and that will be fine needle biopsy or core biopsy procedures. So, what is the idea about histology? So, we already know that if you do have a histo some tissue that can be histo histologically evaluated, even if you're from, from with an, that you obtain with an FNA needle, your sensitivity will go up and that we said that you should 
try to get it with your F&A needle. And uh, when do you really need it? When it's for some specific reason. So, so sometimes you may need to see the tissue architecture. Uh, and uh, th an example of that will be a differentiated pancreatic cancer. It may be difficult really to, to, to diagnose from cytology, lymphoma, submucosal tumors, autoimmune pancreatitis, and of course liver biopsy. Those are not really very common indications for FNA. Uh, there is now, because this is becoming very popular, these FNA B, um, FNB needles and, and core biopsies, so they, they often argue that one of the advantages is to have uh, more tissue to allow for genetic testing. Genetic testing, though, is, uh, I think, to my knowledge, really not commonly really done and required. So uh, pancreatic cancer is a genetic disease but it's not really common to have any targeted therapy nowadays that would be based on genetic testing done from the tumor. There is in a, a, a more interest now in, in genetic testing of pancreatic cancer patients for mutations they cause familiar or hereditary cancer, but those are mutations that are found in the germline uh, in, 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 in the blood, and it, those are germline mutations. So these patients are undergoing, especially in the United States, where there is more of these mutations uh, geographically. So they may undergo sporadic patients, may undergo genetic testing, and this may have some impact on, 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 on their treatment. But, but trying to uh, get uh, um, genetic testing or genetic analysis from the tissue looking for somatic mutations, it's not really very common and may not really be that um, important in, in the near future, I think. And you can also overcome some of this by immunohistochemistry. So I'm not sure if this is really a major goal. And, uh, but if you do get a core and you see it, it may definitely decrease the number of passes you do and, re of course, uh, eliminate the need for online, patholo uh, online uh, pathologists there. So the first needles, FNB needles, that were available already some time ago were these reverse bevel procore needles and, and they have this special shape and it was sorry, expected that, that they, what, when, when, when using them, this, this reverse bevel would shear the uh, tissue and get the tissue into the hole. Uh, we did a study, a large randomized study, where we randomized over 140 patients. Each of them had biopsies with a conventional FNA needle and FN, this FNB pro core. And you see that we, had, we saw no differences in the, in the important parameters, except we were able to get to our diagnosis with a fewer number of passes. This was reproduced with many other studies. This is, there were uh, two meta-analysis, I'm showing one of them, and you see that the only difference that they were able to see is the decrease, the decrease number of, of passes uh, that you, you do with, uh, FN, with the Procore needle. So uh, there is no other benefit, so the recommendation is that you can equally use both of them. Uh, and now we come to the really, you know, core needles, the newly developed. The first one will be the fork tip needle called Shark Core from Medtronic. There is one retrospective case control study where they looked at patients that they uh, investigated in, in the years before and uh, uh, you see that they had 39 with the Shark and 117 with the standard FNA and they were able to show that uh, uh, sufficient histology was generated with the new needle much more frequently than with an FNA needle. You see the 59%, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing your attention to the first paper I showed you with the same needle that showed only 4% of histology samples. And also there was a decrease in number of passes required to get a re the result. Boston Scientific has a needle called Acquire that has this special three tip, very sharp uh, tip. and. Uh, there is a recent uh, randomized study in this case. Uh, patients, 41 patients, were, had a biopsy with both needles, and you can see they did some sophisticated analyses here in Orlando, and uh, you see that the area of total tissue was much greater. Area of tumor itself was greater. 
but they also saw a lot of desmoplasia, uh, so fibrosis there, retained architecture almost in all of the cases, and very few of these, and the cell block diagnostic yield was better, so they were able to get to the diagnosis in more of the cases, and this was all statistically significant. Immunohistochemistry could be applied on all of the FNB uh, samples and on 70% of the, of the FNA samples that also generated cell block. There is another study. This is a comparison of the two that I already mentioned. So this is the acquire and the shark in between, a comparison between the two new core uh, biopsy needles. And you see the same parameters, but here they are similar. So the four, we already saw in the previous slide how the Francine needle performed, but the fork tip in this study, comparison study, performed similarly. So no difference in this amount of tissue that you get. And if you look at the uh, diagnostic abilities, uh, diagnostic cell block or ROSE, adequacy was the same. So they came to the diagnosis at the same amount of cases. And I think this is the last needle to show you. This is a study not published fully. There's some people in the audience, part of the multicenter group that evaluated this new Cook uh, Procore needle that has, however, a different shape of the side hole. They call this integrate core trap. And, uh, this is a large study, as opposed to the ones that we saw, most of them, there was only one or two from all the studies that I showed you that had more than 100 patients. This study has like 600 patients, and you see huge differences here. So technical feasibility, actually, with a standard FNA needle was a little better. So I guess this is a larger needle that may have some difficulties in certain situations, but it's not really a big difference. But histological yield was better. And when you come to diagnostic accuracy for malignancy, the FNA B needle performed better than the standard FNA. The FNB needle performed better than FNA. So to conclude, uh, it's, it, FNA is, is a powerful technique that already has very high sensitivity and accuracy. There are some factors during the procedure that influenced the yield. I did not mention the importance of the pathologist. I think Julio already mentioned that, and he needs to be a part of your team. And if you do not have a good pathologist, you cannot expect to get good results with your FNA. So a dedicated pathologist, mainly a cytologist. We saw that the 22, 25, and the standard reverse bevel, they don't really make a major difference. It doesn't really matter which one you use. I think personally that FNA, is sufficient in most indications that we have. And in, in, in a decent number of ca cases, you can get histology that will increase your sensitivity. And there is now a few new core biopsies needles that, that show very high ability to provide a high volume core. Uh, and they probably will also have better diagnostic sense accuracy and sensitivity. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.